Hey, what is up YouTube friends and family? I am so happy today. Um, I wasn't expecting it yet, uh, but as you can see, I've got a box in front of me and it's about this long. So we all know that there's some goodness inside and I am uh, the beard guy at Guns and Gear. So you know that I've got guns or gear or beard products in here. And with the length of it, you're probably guessing it looks like a gun you would be right. And I know what it is and I'm so excited for it. This, like I have put so much research into this for the last two years. Um, I've been, you know, putting some money aside and hoping, 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 hoping to try and find exactly the one that I wanted and uh, one of the suppliers that I go to and shop at quite regularly uh, happened to uh, procure several of these in different calibers. And so I snapped it up because I was ready and I'm so happy. Like it's, it's, you know, it's still, it's not even spring yet. As you can see, probably in the background, there's still a bunch of snow. So, but I wanted to get this as soon as possible so I can get an optic on it and get it ready for hunting. And this is what I think, again, I put so much research into this. I love the reviews that I've seen on it. I haven't seen any bad things mentioned about this and it's a little pricey we'll talk about that but i hope that you guys if you're in the market you need to watch this video because this might change your mind as far as what your next purchase of what i'm gonna give you a hint and say probably a perfect deer uh any large game really with maybe the exception of a moose you might want something a little heavier uh caliber hunting rifle that has just taken off, taken off. Like popularity from hardly being able to find that cartridge in stores to it is the dominant, I would argue the dominant cartridge right now for especially deer hunting and elk and all of that stuff. So I'm so happy. We're gonna do an unbox on this because I haven't seen it yet. I've seen pictures of it, but pictures don't do it justice. Uh, so I've got my little two and a half inch drop point uh, knife here. And I am going to uh, get into this as soon as possible. It was just dropped off this morning. Like while I was having my morning coffee, my son basically said, guess what showed up? So he's behind the camera right now. And uh, probably as anxious as I am to take a look at this. So we'll get this opened up for you guys. Uh, I really, really hope that you guys are as excited as I, well, I mean, I'm, of course you'd be more excited if it was coming to your house, but sorry, I didn't buy one for everybody. Ooh, a little sneak peek. I just got a little sneak peek. Oh my God. Wow, when they secure it for shipping, they really secure it for shipping. Mmm, smells like new rifle. It's a chunky boy too. I kind of busted up the box, but I don't care because I'm too excited. I don't get excited very often, but this is making me excited. So, where did I get this? Uh, good friends at SFRC shipped it out to me like two days ago and it arrived. There we go. Cat's out of the bag now. The Bergera. B14. This is going to be chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. And I've been jonesing for a 6.5 Creedmoor since my brother went and uh, I'm going to say he was almost an innovator, which is really weird for him uh, because he bought a 6.5 Creedmoor on a Tika platform long before uh, the hunters started saying this is the rifle you need to get. Uh, the cartridge. Look at this. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, I got a nice Bergera sticker. Reverse, so I could even put it on my windshield of my car, which may or may not be appreciated. Got an AICS five round uh, proprietary magazine. Okay. Very cool, solid polymer. That is a really solid feeling magazine. So that is awesome, awesome. The bolt, wow. Look at that. 
Nice angle, nice knurled uh, handle. Beautiful looking. The machining on this thing, I mean, just looks precise, precise, precise. Very cool looking. That is really awesome. And a short action too. So that will be uh, super easy to cycle. And now let's get this thing out of the box and behold its beautifulness. And I want to talk about why I went with this particular firearm. Get that stuff out of here. It's a good thing my wife's not here. She's freaking out right now. Am I making a mess? She doesn't talk like that, but when I imitate her, that's how I talk. Um, all right, so just look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. It is the Bergera B14 uh, Wilderness Terrain, uh, made in Spain. So, you know, kind of a departure. Wow, that is chunky. Look at the barrel on that. I mean, you know, not fluted, not like anything like that, just like a big old robust heavy duty uh, barrel. No marring on it, as you'll see. It's uh, covered in a gray Cerakote all the way back to the very end. Uh, Cerakote is an amazing product. My dog's in the box. Uh, Cerakote is an amazing product because it will protect your investment for, well, longer than you'll be around. Okay, so it really resists uh, very well to uh, any kind of weather elements, corrosion. This is gorgeous and very similar very similar to the Weatherby Vanguard that I have as far as controls. I mean, the safety is right up there. Very easy to get your fingers on. Magazine release um, right in front of the trigger guard. Let's talk about the Bergera and why I went with the Bergera besides just, I mean, the looks of it. We're going to have to move this out of the way because my dog is making a lot of racket. Now he's trying to eat the paper. So get that out of your mouth. That's cool. This is Chewy. Okay, he's in all of our videos. He's always in the background because uh, he thinks that as soon as I sit down here that I'm going to open the door for him and he's going to get a cookie. So as soon as we bring out uh, the tripod and start videoing, he starts uh, making his way around because he wants a cookie. All right, enough about Chewy. Let's talk about this rifle and like I said, why I decided to go with the Bergera. First of all, um, there's a little bit of sibling rival rivalry between my brother and I, and if you have siblings, you probably feel the same way. As much as I really like the Tika, I wasn't gonna go down the same road as him. So I wanted to go with something different. The more I started watching videos and the more I started looking at 6.5 Creedmoors, the more I started realizing that uh, Bergera is what Remington 700s used to be. And let me explain that. You guys probably know as well as I do that Remington 700, uh, Remington factory in general has kind of gone downhill as far as uh, quality control. And there are some excellent high priced rifles, but what they're selling to most of the public and what the most of the public are picking up and, and I'll, you know, hit on like the 783, for instance, if you picked one up 20 years ago, you have an excellent rifle, a very fine shooting rifle. Nowadays, I've seen the fit and finish, the build quality, it's a little sloppy. I look at this and I can tell you that, you know, to an untrained eye at least, it is absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful. Uh, the precision, the tooling, I mean, it is just all kinds of sexy. Let's talk about the, some of the features of this, okay? So you, what you'll probably notice is it's got a very long barrel. It's got an actual 24 inch uh, barrel, omnidirectional, and as I already said, it's Cerakoted in a sniper gray. 
uh, sorry, omnidirectional uh, muzzle brake with a threaded barrel at the end. So that's cool. You can customize that if you want to change it. And uh, from what I've seen in the reviews, um, a lot of people recommend changing that omnidirectional to a directional muzzle brake just for recoil. Although 6.5 Creedmoor doesn't really throw back a lot of uh, recoil to begin with. The uh, mini chassis that this particular model, and again, this is the wilderness um, terrain. The mini chassis is a uh, one piece aluminum hand painted. So no, no two rifle is going to be the same. No two rifles are going to be the same. You're going to get little variances, which I think is amazing and cool anyway. Like there's, you know, a factory or whatever, and these ones are produced in the US. Um, but anyway, people sitting around and like doing their own little touches on them. So even if your buddy that you go hunting with has uh, the exact same rifle, they're going to be slight differences. Uh, it's a 4140 chromoly steel barrel with a, a 5.5 taper. So as you look at that towards the, uh, the, the, the chamber itself, it's beefy and it tapers down quite a bit, but it's still a very robust barrel. And I think the aim of the Bergeras, and they did this first with the HMR, and maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you're not, but that's the uh, hunting match rifle. So it's kind of like a crossover hybrid selling it like as far as somebody wants to go hunting it's ready to go if you want to go uh, and enter a match and do some long distance shooting it's ready to go the chassis itself is more it's very similar although they have the length of the pull as well as the cheek riser and it's it, it's much more obvious that you could take this uh, that particular model uh, match shooting this one here I have no doubt if you set it up you can go match shooting with this. It's got the cheek riser. The barrel is what Bergera is really saying. Like they've got the best, they're claiming they have the best uh, barrels rifling process. So their, their, their reputation that they're building is based on the best drilling, honing and rifling and guaranteeing it in a sub MOA package. The turns itself are five eighths turn for 24 inches. Uh, um, like I said, amazing rifle. Some of the other features that you'll notice, that which are way cool, is you'll see these little, I mean, I'm sure they're just appearing like little holes on the side. You can see them on the front, and they're on both sides. Those are actually uh, QD sling mounts. So when I looked at this rifle, I was like, wow, how, how good of them to think about that? Because if you hunt and you walk a lot with your rifle, you have the stereotypical uh, sling points at the butt and at the front. Okay, so if you put a bipod on this, where's your sling mount on the front? Unless you want to do like a mount Picatinny or something along those lines, you're going to lose something up here. And as you can see, I have two up here. So if I wanted to go with the traditional sling, I could go with the traditional sling mount and I could still keep it for a uh, you know, the uh, bipod that mounts to the, pr the traditional sling point on the front. Or I could go with the QD sling mounts right here. And you think about where your scope is mounted, the rifle is gonna lay flat on your back. Okay, and you know, I would, I would carry it on this side because then I don't have the bolt sticking into my back when I walk. So amazing thought and uh, you know, bravo to them for thinking about this. I'm sure that other rifles and manufacturers are gonna follow suit because that is an amazing idea unto itself. Some of the other things that sold me on this, it's got an adjustable trigger from 1.5 to five pounds. I've heard that although it's adjustable, it doesn't feel the best. And that might be true, I haven't fired it yet, but I'm, I'm so, ang I'm gonna put a nice scope on that. We'll talk about this in a second and uh, we'll take it out and do a little bit of accuracy shooting. Uh, from what I saw in some of the reviews, it's a little bit fussy as far as ammunition. You can definitely get sub MOA, but the review that I watched, the guy was not happy with the results that he was getting. He was getting like a two and a half inch grouping at 100 yards, uh, but he had much better success with other ammunition. So I know that there's a Hornady uh, match that does really well on this, and I'll try a few different ones. 
just to see what it's best. And, it, and I mean, if you've shot rifle before, you know that some ammunition seems to work really well on some rifles and not so well on other rifles. So I'm anxious to get this out to the range and to see how it shoots, but it is just all kinds of gorgeous. I mean, it's a little chunky, like I said, this one here weighs in at 9.3 pounds. I think the 308 caliber on the mini chassis, and I, I, I'd have to look again, but I, the barrel might be a little bit shorter. And that one comes in at 8.9 pounds, but this one is a little bit chunky, but I don't mind lugging around a little bit of beauty on my back. And this is absolutely gorgeous. I am so stoked about that. And again, you know, adjustable cheek riser. The, the magazine, the quality of this thing is just unbelievable. And, and Bergera itself, they're saying that they're building the quality that Remington used to. They're actually flat out saying that. So, and this is like a Remington 700 clone. I don't know why you would, but let's say you wanted to change the parts on this. Uh, Remington 700 is drop in. So all the parts that are available for Remington 700, even your Kdex uh, chassis, if you want to go blow a ton of money and really get into precision shooting, it will fit. It, it's a drop-in, plug-and-play. Um, if you wanted to change the trigger group, Remington 700 trigger groups, I, there's a ton of companies, Timmy, you name it, that are making uh, amazing trigger groups for the Remington 700, and they will work on this. But... I mean, it, it, it feels great. The only complaint I think I saw in some of the reviews that I saw is no length of pull adjustment, but this is really kind of geared more to the hunter than the match shooter. If you wanted something to do match shooting with, then you would probably want to pick up the HMR if you were looking for a Bergera. And the Bergera, I really highly recommend based on all the reviews and all of, and I've done research for like two years. Every time there's a new review come out, I've watched it just to see if there was any kind of issue. The magazine itself, I mean, like everybody has said, like it just, like it just wants to go in there. Very easy to manipulate. And I mean, just look at that as far as uh, a, a great looking rifle. Protection, the Cerakote, it feels amazing. Uh, I mean, it shoulders very well. Um, once I get a scope on there, I'll be able to tell, and it takes the Remington 700 scope mount, so uh, it's not difficult to find. You don't have to go and look for something uniquely uh, for Bergera. And the 6.5 Creedmoor. So why did I go with 6.5 Creedmoor? It is really taking off, and maybe it's hype, but I have seen no complaints about it. The, the ballistics on uh, the 6.5 Creedmoor is what is making a lot of hunters and even precision shooters switch over from kind of that tried and true 308 caliber. Uh, th th and there's a, a lot of other, I mean, even the Carcano that we did a review on, uh, or at least looked at, that's a 6.5. Um, so 6.5 is not a, a cartridge or caliber that is brand new to the market, but the 6.5 Creedmoor and PRC and, and Grendel and like all of those, they're really making hunters and maybe it's a new generation of hunters are kind of reevaluating, you know, they're not just taking that old Savage Lever Action 308 from that their dad used and now they have, you know, available to go deer hunting. They're really looking at, well, you know, depending on where you hunt, let's say, if you're hunting at a place where you're going 300 meters, 400 meters, you want something with a nice flat trajectory, right? And the 6.5 Creedmoor is flat. Uh, a lot of people are shooting the, the 129 grain, but you can certainly go over that. I would suggest that you always uh, take the rifle, go when you get a scope, sight it in, and see is what can what is consistent and works for you. So I'm gonna play around with this a little bit uh, I'm looking for a scope. I'm leaning towards a, a Vortex. I'm not a guy who spends a lot of money on optics, but I think this rifle deserves um, a sub $1,000 decent uh, optic. If you have any ideas, please drop it in the comments. I'd love to see if you have any experience. I want something uh, deer hunting. The large, longest ranges that we're shooting at are about 150 meters. 
But I think I want to try a little predator hunting with this and maybe nail some uh, coyotes. And there's a place where we can go where it's 300 meters or maybe even more. So I want something that's got good optics, clear glass, and uh, will function both as well. I'm thinking a zoom like somewhere between two and a half uh, to 12 zoom. So let me know in the comments what you guys recommend as far as uh, optics, what your experience is. Uh, I've always liked Vortex, but there's so many good companies now uh, that are putting out, and I know they're all made in China anyway, unless you go with like Leopold or something and, and you know paying big bucks. But if you have experience with something that's working, I want something that's a little robust. This rifle is going to come out in the woods with me, and uh, I'm not going to see it get banged around because I think I'd cry if this got banged around. But uh, and the price point on this is around sixteen hundred dollars Canadian. But for sixteen hundred dollars, I think you're really entering into kind of a, a, a another notch. You know, it, it's not the best and the most highest price hunting rifle slash match rifle that you can get, but this is certainly, in my mind, top of the middle. And every single face-to-face -face that I've seen on uh, YouTube, uh, every single one that I've seen, this has always made it in the top three. Uh, not a lot of gun shops are carrying them. SFRC has a few of them in all kinds of calibers. You can get 308, uh, again, 6.5. Not necessarily just the Creedmoor though. Uh, you can get it in a 300 Winchester Magnum. Uh, they're amazing rifles. Uh, as far as reputation goes, they're putting a lot into the fit and finish of it. They're absolutely beautiful to look at. And they have really gone out of their way and uh, listened, I believe, to customers. What do you guys want? Well, you know, the new line of customers, right? We want some, you know, flush cap QD points so we don't get poked in the back by the scope or the magazine or the bolt anymore. And I mean, they're throwing it on there. It's a gorgeous looking rifle. And I am so happy and I can't wait to put a scope on this and try it out. This thing is amazing looking. All right, so I, I could go on and on and on about it because uh, I'm like a kidney candy store right now or it's Christmas time at the, at, at the beer guy's house. So. Please click on like, follow, subscribe. I'm gonna, I, I've got another one coming this afternoon too, which I'm, it, it, this is the best day ever. So I've got another thing coming back from the Smith today and you guys are in it for a real treat because uh, although I haven't seen it, uh, I'm excited to get my hands on it. So I'm gonna let you guys bask in all its glory because it is absolutely gorgeous. If you're in the market for a rifle, I really think you should really consider the Bergera, not because I have one and I want a bunch of people to follow what I've done, but I think what you're getting for $1,600, I'm gonna say it much to my brother's chagrin that I think it surpasses what you could pay for $1,600 uh, with some of the more uh, known brands, i.e. Remington for sure, unfortunately, Remington for sure but some of the other ones like Tika and uh, Browning and, and you know, you name it, you name it. Uh, they're really, really, really doing a wonderful job. Our money is precious to us and they're putting something in our hands that can serve as a crossover. Maybe not serious, but uh, definitely, um, you know, there's a little marring up in the front, but I think it's just like the residue from the paint. It's kind of got like a thrown in, kind of like somebody did a drive-by with a black, brush and just laid down some kind of cool striping on it. So anyway, uh, we're going to shoot some close-ups of this and you guys are going to get a really good look on it, uh, look at it. It is absolutely gorgeous. All right, that's enough of me rambling on and on and on and on and on about this beautiful looking rifle. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I certainly enjoyed opening that box and getting my first uh, looks at this. Uh, if you did like it, subscribe please. Um, it's amazing to me that the subscribers are going up, meaning that you guys are liking, or a lot of you guys are liking uh, what I'm putting out there. And uh, it's encouraging me to keep on going and keep on putting more videos out to you. I am the guy with beard, guns, and gear. I hope you love this video. Have a great day, great weekend. It's going to be a good weekend for me anyway. Started off on the right foot, and I will see you at another time.